Bukashi is relatively new on the scene. It's a anaerobic fermentation process. It's a lot more forgiving than a traditional uh, composting system uh, where you have to keep it aerated and, and watch your input levels and all that stuff so that it doesn't create an anaerobic situation. Here we're actually, we actually are going for an anaerobic situation, but we're inoculating it with the microbes that we want in the system. So we're kind of almost creating a cheese or a beer with our compost rather than trying to create a, trying to have it break down with air. With regular compost, you can't put bones, you can't put grease, you shouldn't put citrus peels in it. Bokashi, you can put all of those things into it. Small Bokashi bucket systems can fit under your sink. When you open it up, it should have a, a pleasant smell kind of yeasty, not funky, like so many of your like countertop kitchen composters can get. So it's a really, really nice system for a home user, for a casual user. Our hope through this project was to show that that system can work together with a vermicomposting system, which on you know certain scales, vermicomposting is pretty user-friendly as well. So how can we marry the two and show that there's a benefit to putting them together? Well, we certainly had hopes, and we really wanted to show that Bokashi, because of the different microbial activity that was happening within it, that it would enhance the life in the vermicomposting bin. Our expectations, we really didn't hang a lot on it because the Bokashi is, is acidic, and so, um, you know, we knew we would have to adjust the pH and adjusting the pH to neutral or near enough neutral to not hurt the earthworms um, might affect some of the good stuff that we had created in the, in the Bokashi in the first place. Wound up finally landing on not worrying about changing the pH because we found that we weren't harming the earthworms, we weren't killing them. We had earthworm eggs and embryo and everything all the way up in both our A and B test spaces. In the case of our vermicomposting situation, we've got a, a drum that has a false bottom in it. We put the material that we're composting into it, and then we sprinkle Bokashi grains, and that's an inoculated bran. It inoculates the, the bucket then. It's all mashed down flat, and then we actually put another another piece of material on top of it just to kind of hold everything together and then close the lid on it. And we're never flipping it, we're never turning it, we're never doing anything with it. So this is our Bokashi and this is our regular compost. So we put the same materials into both of these at the same time. We put our Bokashi grains, we layer our Bokashi grains into this as we're building it. Um, we do mix these materials when they're going in here because they're going to get mixed in here and then we turn our compost tumbler regularly these both go for three weeks to a month depending on the weather depending on the heat and we take a measured amount out of out of both out of both systems and we take that measured amount into our worm bin this is the worm bin. This side does not receive Bokashi. This side receives the regular compost. This side, side re receives the Bokashi. We test our <coughs> moisture level with this moisture meter. We probe a few different places. So that's, that's a two. Actually, that's a, I went through. So it's very moist. Um, we were flooding, we were flooding this, uh, system for a while, trying to get rid of ants that had moved in and finally managed to do that. And so now we're just letting the soil kind of dry back out. It, it is a flow through. So if you look underneath here, if you look underneath here, you'll see there's uh, EMT conduit here and there's the, uh, vermicompost just right up inside there so we can harvest it by just running a tool so 
up underneath there. Since we were moving this into an earthworm den, and since we were doing a, a traditional compost compared to a bokashi, we did not want to put orange peels, grease, and bones into our regular compost tumbler. So since we were trying to match the inputs in the AB test, we didn't put those into the bokashi either. Not that that's the reason that we had some batches of bokashi fail. It's just worth noting. So there were, there were some challenges, some learning curves, especially for me uh, coming into it. The first challenge our team encountered was the loss of our worm population. Our initial attempt to populate the worm bins was in August, and conditions at the greenhouse got too warm when the population was being established. Water was also added to the substrate material, which already contained an excess of nitrogenous material from rabbit droppings and coffee chaff. The moisture, heat, and nitrogen kicked off a composting process which escalated temperatures, and our first batch of worms was lost within 48 hours. Our second attempt in February was a success. The second major challenge was an ant infestation. The ants just move in. The system is outdoors in a small greenhouse, but there's no way to really control for ants coming in. We did a lot of different things to try to to try to solve that, and we still got ants. So really the only solution is keeping the soil super saturated, watering it once or twice a day, which the worms really don't care for. But the ants also don't, and the ants will move out before the earthworms die. But it was a constant struggle. We had bad ant infestations at least four times through the whole process. We also experienced a transition in project leadership when the former project head resigned. Rob assumed the position with no prior experience in earthworm or bokashi systems, and he began comprehensive research and designed a new system for our project. The project involved an A-B experiment, but the process was overcomplicated and left too much room for error. I really kind of really kind of fell in love with uh, vermicomposting, and I think we're going to continue to use vermicomposting uh, systems in our farm, I've got some modifications I'm going to throw at it. For, for example, each of the worm beds are rectangular. So it's really easy to maintain moisture in the center of all that, but in the corners, it's almost impossible. And so we would have the corners drying out terribly. And so they would literally just kind of fall through. So my intention is to actually put some sort of a corner rounding, maybe cut some PVC pipe in quarters and fasten it to those corners and then backfill it with foam or something like that just to keep it all insulated in that space so that so that there's not a lot of heat exchange and moisture loss through all of that other other things i've i've done bokashi in like a three gallon bucket in the kitchen and it's been fine we had some real trouble with the large container keeping the inoculation level high enough so that we stayed in uh, essential microbes um, situation. A couple of times we had what was supposed to be Bokashi turn out to be green mold and all kinds of weirdness in there. So we wound up not using those inputs. So that kind of set our, set our process back a little bit too. The first and perhaps biggest difference we notice in results from samples A and B is the carbon levels, which were fairly consistent throughout the project with a more carbon-rich vermicompost in the Bakashi samples. This may be a good addition to a newly tilled garden or a conversion from lawn to garden bed, but it is not as desirable of an addition to an existing garden. Secondly, the nitrogen levels, only measured in the last three samples, initially indicated higher organic life activity in the Bakashi sample, but became comparable to the non-Bakashi samples towards the end of the project. This, combined with carbon levels, resulted in an equalized carbon-to-nitrogen ratio. For macronutrients, we saw consistently higher calcium, magnesium, and potassium in non-Bakashi samples, and higher sodium levels in Bakashi samples. This, combined with nitrogen readings, may indicate more microbial activity in the samples before we began measuring nitrogen. We saw a slight difference in pH across the samples. 
Though these levels may not be as important as carbon and nitrogen, they may affect other measurements through nutrient availability for microbes. pH was higher in all Bokashi samples except one, which may be due to the previously mentioned watering variabilities. Overall, this experiment was inconclusive. The additional expense and effort involved in using Bokashi as a vermicompost input may not offer enough benefit to support its use. Without a practical way to measure the biological activity of different composting methods, the most valuable thing for on-farm application is which method saves time or increases decomposition of materials. This is not a good way to like pre-bake your compost inputs before they go into your vermicompost. I mean, it worked, but it, it, didn't, it didn't give us what we were, the results we were hoping for. This experiment may be reproduced and may see different results than we present here. If one wishes to do so, we recommend modifying the experiment as follows. 1. Situate the vermicompost bins in a more climate-controlled environment. 2. Measure water inputs and leachate volume, and testing leachate for pH at the very least. 3. Maintain a consistent testing method and lab throughout the experiment.